If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this controversial oh, episode. Oh, shit. Buckle, Was it? Buckle the fuck nah. up. Of Mind Pump for the first 38 minutes, Adam, Justin, and myself. Piss some people off. Do our fun conversation. Finally, it's been a while. We talk about my Star Wars spoiler. You dick. Dun, dun, dun. No. Uh, Luke is uh, no, don't, Darth it, Vader's son. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we talk Breaking about, news. We talk about Jim Carrey and artists in general, how tormented they are and how we like them tormented because they make yeah. the best art that way. They're the best. We talk about my experience with Vertigo the other day. Fucking sucked. Uh, we talk about the health IQ quiz that we took. Look, we recommend you go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump. Take the quiz. See if you could beat my score of 186. I think Adam scored 186 also. Justin hasn't taken it yet. He's afraid. <laughs> I got called out. But yeah. he will soon. I, I'm on it right now. We mentioned Organifi's Gold Juice again, which uh, I've tried. They still haven't tried. Come on, shut up. <laughs> uh, you, they are one of our sponsors. I'm living in the green. So, so. if you go to OrganifiShop.com forward slash Mind Pump, you will get a discount. We also talk about my supplement addiction. Really? Is it an addiction? <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, more of a yeah. I don't know, dude. It's I a think, thing I've I seen. It. I, I suppose. Then we talked about cannabis addiction. Adam's dream interpretation. We think he's in love with Doug. We talk about sleep deprivation, driving citations, and my old crazy insurance premiums. Yeah. Then we get into the questions. This individual is saying that she's constantly being told that lifting weights won't make women bulky, but she just looks at a weight and she puts on tons of muscle. Is she an exception wow. to the rule? Is she a genetic freak? Congratulations. Or is she just freaking out? Next question is, what are our thoughts on carb cycling for fat loss in comparison to intermittent fasting and maintaining consistent daily intake? What are our thoughts on these things, comparing them? Do, you think, do we think intermittent fasting should be used for fat loss? Do we like carb cycling? Find out in this episode. Then we get to a controversial one. Oh, boy. We give out our opinions on... Net neutrality. We pull no punches. Uh, we try to inform you guys with uh, what we think is the truth. <laughs> Enjoy that part of the episode. The fair police will love this. Right, then right. we get into the final question. Do we think that when we're children, we automatically know how to eat intuitively, but then life fucks everything up? There's some truth to that. You'll find out in this episode. Also, we're in December. That means next month is January. That's the beginning of the year. Start the new year off Right. Everybody wants to get in shape in January. Everybody's New Year's resolution is to lose weight, build muscle, but nobody has a plan. That's the problem. Most people don't have a plan. What they think is, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to hammer myself. I'm going to stop eating crappy food. That's the extent of their plan. Part of your success is having a more detailed plan, knowing what you're going to do every week, knowing what exercises you're going to do, what order you're going to do them, having trainers there, demonstrating them for you, showing you what you need to do having all the tools at your disposal. For less than the cost of a membership, you can get the MAPS Super Bundle. That includes many of our MAPS programs. It's a year of exercise programming. In other words, January through December, you're going to know what your workout looks like. You're going to have exercise demos, blueprints. It's all in there for you. That's what we think you should enroll in. That will take you through the year 2018. Also, when you enroll, you're going to get an offer, automatic offer for half off our forum. So you get half off the price to access our forum. And then you're in there for life. In January, we're going to have an annual fee. So you will never have that offer again where you can just pay once and you're in forever. So this is a great time to enroll. December is a great time to enroll in fitness. For more information on all these programs, go to mindpumpmedia.com. Did you watch Dark last I night? I did. Oh, you did? It was great. How, you know, I had, I had to watch it, though, in German with subtitles. I did watch one episode. Yeah. Why the? Why is it in German? It's what a, do they do? It's, it's an international a German film. show. It's a, yeah, it's a German yeah, film. Yeah, but, but they're Netflix. Yeah, but you could do... Yeah, you could... Yeah, Netflix bought it. You can listen to it in English. Yeah. I did. 
Yeah, but or I, or you can listen to it with. I don't like that. I'm gonna do subtitles. I didn't know there was weird. an option. I didn't know there was an option to do subtitles. Yeah, you could do you could do options. I hate watching dubbed films because we're spoiled. First of all, we're American, right? So everything we see is in English. <coughs> um, in Europe, they see lots of dubbed films, but yeah, I hate dubbed films because it, they don't always it never, translate. It never, well, it never it matches. Line up, yeah, yeah, it never matches the the people doing the voices. Never match the personality. You it's know, not it's just a, that. It's, it's it more doesn't, distracting. It doesn't like, match the acting. It's like it's like a skinny little blonde girl, and I'm like, I know that's a big fat black guy. That's fucking and talking about it. It just doesn't work, man. It doesn't yeah. work for me. Yeah. Like, it's like, hey, man. And there's a delay, right? Yeah. So there's that delay, too. It just doesn't, it doesn't match the acting. But anyway, it was cool. It was one episode. I'm sure oh, I have to you, watch more oh, than no, one. Oh, no. The second one got me hooked. Okay, I'll so watch I'll the second and one. And so I'm on four or five now, and it's really just really starting to pick up. My boy yeah. told me, he's like, dude, wait till you get to have five episodes deep. Because it's there's the story is so big, and there's so many legs to it. I'm like... After episode one, I was like, what the fuck? Episode two, I'm like, now who's that? And I'm trying to put together, like, yeah. who's married to who? And I know. Who, He's banging her. But there, yeah, there's, like, yeah, there's, wait, a, wait, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of sh- working, moving parts. I in watched, it. What is this cave? So I watched <laughs> one episode, the first one, which was pretty fascinating. And then I went and got the midnight showing of uh, Star Wars. You too. So, <laughs> you guys dude, did. Yeah. So fuck spoiler guys. alert. Why didn't you call me, dude? <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah. If, you, if you don't want a spoiler, plug your ears. Everybody dies. Shut up. Fucking fuck? Princess <laughs> Leia, trip off this. Princess yeah. Leia, yeah. Darth Vader's daughter. Shut up. Darth Vader's daughter. <laughs> yeah, She's did. Darth Vader's daughter. We already daughter. knew that asshole. <laughs> oh, she, oh, we did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you missed that. Oh, my the, bad. The earlier ones. <laughs> my bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you believe what happened to Yoda? <laughs> I'm so angry about this, dude. Like, <laughs> I, don't know. I seriously have to wait. Till Saturday to watch. Fuck. Well, you know, I'm surprised. Wait till I'm Sunday. surprised you actually just didn't pony up and get another ticket and go go early and then fucking. Dude, I have kids and like you know, I I, I can't just. Pew, I'm just gonna go. Yeah, I'm so free. Yeah, yeah like I just, Adam forgets. I can't sometimes. do that. Like I I really want to do that. Adam right? sometimes forgets that yeah. you can't just. Decide to do something. Yeah. I f- no, I don't. <laughs> hey, no, I, yeah, I, I'm going, you, bro. See ya. Yeah, you, do. Yeah. Yeah. you guys always. Yeah. No, you guys never fail to remind me all yeah. the perks of having children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're free. Okay, sorry, you're free. I sorry, get it. Sorry, Katrina. Yeah. For the reason why I don't want to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> right when he thinks about it. Right when he's like, you know, I might uh, have one. He has a conversation with me and Justin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll wait. Yeah, he's like, oh, oh, quiet time is when you go poop. That's the only time it's quiet. Dude, yeah, can we poop. can we fix the fucking AC or heater in here or whatever is going on? Definitely not the AC. Dude, it's... uh. <sighs> so heater. I'm sure. never cold. Yeah. So you're not, and you are this time. Oh, so here's what's crazy. This two is things. an icebox. Two things. I came in this morning hella early, right? Two things. I saw hella. I saw a, a penguin. There was a penguin in here. You did? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that, I'm like, if well... If it was a polar bear, it's probably just me. I'm like, out of the it's bathroom. fucking cold. There's a penguin in here. <sighs> and then, no, all joking aside, this is how cold it got in the studio. You could breathe, you're talking, you could see your breath. It's not supposed to be like no, that it's indoors. Super, super cold. You know, you said penguin. It just reminded me of Jim Carrey. Did you guys watch the Netflix thing of Jim Carrey? Did no. You? Oh, you haven't seen that? Uh. Uh-uh. No. Oh not fuck! Yet. I did, I thought I My thought wife you hates told me Jim Carrey. <laughs> I told you to watch it, but I haven't seen it. She, oh, you need to watch it. Him. Yeah. You need I'm gonna, to watch I'm it. I'm gonna watch yeah. it. I love Jim Carrey. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. It's so, really sad. So apparently, he went out in the woods and ate a bunch of mushrooms and shit totally Wait, changed. That's not the one. That, or is that different? That's the, this is one he's doing. He does Andy Kaufman, right? This that's well, what this one's about. No, this is about his life. Like he breaks down. Like, he, but it's he doesn't get into. Although it seems like a result of going and taking mushrooms and like kind of how he feels. But he doesn't mm-hmm. say that. Like he doesn't talk anything about psychedelics or anything like that. He just gets into like his whole life. And they, uh, they, who is the guy? Is it Andy Kaufman? Was yeah. the comedian right? That yeah. he, he people. He's so, the one that like purposely would do shit to just confuse everybody and like yeah. Oh my god, he was a, geni- crazy. a genius, weird genius. Yeah, he was like way so too th- beyond it. They shared all the clips behind the scene of him getting ready for that film and it's fucking he kind of loses his mind. Yeah. He loses his mind. You know, I've heard about this before. He went full Kaufman. I've heard about this before with actors where to the point where the director like called him and was like like are you all right? Yeah, yeah, no. He was like, dude, I I don't know if we can continue this film type of deal because they he, he could he would never get out of character, uh, even Offset. What method is that? That's something weird. that the it's something method. A, it's called a method, method actor. actor yeah. oh, That's what it's called. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's called a method actor. But even then, like it was to the extreme. Yeah, it was like to the extreme where he caused like people like fist fights, like guys trying to punch him on set. Like it oh, was. Really? Oh, it's, you guys got to watch it. It's yeah. over the top. You have you feel to feel kind of sad. You have to understand that artists. Some of the best artists, musicians, actors, mm. you know, just the best artists are the reason why they're so good and the reason why they strike a nerve and a chord with people 
and they resonate with people is because they feel everything and they're all slightly crazy. And yeah. I don't mean that in the negative. Well, Sometimes like, it can be. It's like Daniel Day Lewis. I yeah. mean, he's the best because he like fully immerses himself as that person, and, lives like that person for those years, and, and then it just shows. This is film. why a lot you have all these musicians and artists, and even before musicians made tons of money and had all that access to drugs and all that stuff. Even if you go back far enough, like the the famous artists, uh, you know, like uh, Monet and all these other, you know, cutting their ears off and doing all yeah, these but, weird things. It's because they feel so much that they're tormented yeah, by it, it's like, and they exp- and and it and it and they express it, and it relieves some of this this whatever they feel, this too much that they feel. We get to enjoy it, but they're in constant torment. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Have you ever met like an insanely good artist that isn't somewhat fucked up? You have to be. Oh, I don't know if you have to be. I hate to well, say I that, know, I don't but know. you're right. I'm sure there is. You know, there's somebody pretty balanced and had like a good childhood and all that. But well, it like, makes it makes sense that you're you're going to be out of balance somewhere else, right? Like if you are over the top talented in an area, and I think that goes for almost anything. Because I feel this even this we're talking about like artists right now, but I think this translates even with like your super techie smart guy, right? The guy who's sure. like brilliant, right? Just absolutely brilliant. His math All computes. his eggs are just there. Right, exactly. Yeah. Everything is there, which makes him so brilliant in this category. But then socially, he's like retarded. Did you know? You know what I'm saying? Like yep. he can't have a conversation with somebody. He gets yeah. nervous and he probably shits himself like when he just has to talk to a girl. <laughs> no, really though. How many guys yeah. have you met like this yeah. that people idolize because they're they're brilliant, Yeah. but then yeah. on the but then some of the most simple things uh, that they're, they're disconnected well, from? Well, so- uh, it, anybody who's on the extreme end of the spectrum, uh, there's a high. So if you're extreme end of the spectrum with art, uh, math skills, anything on the extreme end, there's a very strong correlation with mental health issues also. So anxiety, depression, manic depression, uh, mania, uh, schizophrenia, highly correlated with high intelligence. Mm. How how crazy is that? Right, right. Just be and it, really, if you think about it this way, like. If you look at human evolution, here I go again, right? If you look at all human evolution, you imagine humans as this big organism. There's individuals within that, right? But if you look at this whole wide spectrum of humans, it makes sense that for the human species to propagate and to succeed, the vast majority of the individuals that make up that human species have to be average. Mm-hmm. Just the vast majority have to be average. And average means balanced, not crazy can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, whatever. But it also makes sense that a small percentage of them have to be extreme because yeah. it's those extreme individuals that, yeah, that break through, they have man. to stretch the boundaries and, right. and, and, and everybody else has to exactly. get better. Exactly. They're the ones that are like, hey, let's get out of this cave and let's try going over that mountain. Everybody's yeah. like, you're fucking crazy. And then crazy. it benefits the whole. And, it, yeah. and some, many times it doesn't, but sometimes, sometimes it, it right, does. Right, right. So it makes sense that mm. the extremes are, you're going to see a stronger correlation for a lot of these different things. So don't feel so bad if you if you feel like you're a little crazy. Maybe you're just super smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe you're use just, it. Maybe you're just like really a lightning cool. bolt. <laughs> Speaking of going crazy, uh, not yesterday, the day before. Oh God, I hate this. So you guys know what happened. I get up in the, so in the middle of the night, I go to stretch, and the room starts spinning in the middle of the night. So I fucking calm down. I laid down first. I just kind of sat there, kind of went away, and I went back to sleep. Wake up in the morning and. The way I wake up in the morning is my alarm goes off and I jump out of bed. It's just I wake up like yeah. a uh, like like a, you ever watch Dracula when he sits up from his coffin. That's how I wake up in the morning. People, used, my friends used to make fun of me Weird. when I do sleepovers. So I wake up and I sit up, and the and the room is it feels like I'm on the playground spinning thing when you were a kid. Oh you know, shit! You get, like imagine like that kind of spinning. Yeah. So I sit up and I'm like, oh, vodka does that. To oh, me. so yeah. I lay back and I'm like, fuck. So, you know, Jessica's like, oh, my God, what's the matter? What's the matter? I'm like, the room is so, it's spinning, spinning. So I'm laying there, and I'm waiting for it to kind of calm down a little bit, and it's vertigo. I've had it before. It's a benign positional something vertigo. So I've had it before. So then I'm able to, and that's, and it sucks because I had to, I couldn't come to work, and I apologize about that. 
I finally got myself to be able to move a little bit, stand up, and so I started doing these uh, Epley maneuvers that I learned. <clears throat> well, we should tell everybody too that we can't. You cancel. We canceled San Diego, which because some people on our forum knew that we were going down to see Move You, Jocko, and yeah, my uh, fault. Yeah, that's also my bad. Yeah, if you guys were really looking forward to that, that's all Sal's fault. Yeah, that's my fault. So <laughs> that's why I'm telling the story. I'm telling Just the story. Lay it on yeah. real thick. It's, it's not because we wanted to watch yeah. Star Wars. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. At midnight. Yeah, and, that's, and I don't even get to go. Like yeah. you canceled. You know, I, I could have scheduled. That. I I did a lot of ruining. I did a lot of ruining. Listen in. So, but I did these these ep you. Epley maneuvers, which then kind of remedy it a little bit, and it just <clears throat> fucking reminds you of just how like lucky you are to feel good right. and what it feels like. Because there's people who have that all the time, or they'll have it for months. I couldn't imagine what a nightmare. Oh yeah, that would drive me crazy. That's crazy. Months. That would drive. Yeah, that would drive me insane to feel like that all the time. But luckily for me, when I do the Epley maneuvers. Um, it, I end up, it, it takes most of it away. And then I just kind of feel like right now I feel a little, you off. don't know really what causes this, uh, to happen or what? Well, so in the inner ear, the inner ear is what, uh, senses motion. <clears throat> and if you're standing or upside down or whatever, and there's, there, uh, there's this fluid that floats around in there. And there's like, yeah, I think that there's these little hairs in there that detect motion mm -hmm. and, crystals get formed in there and i'm not sure if they get formed in everybody or just in people who get who are prone to vertigo i believe it's in everybody but if they get dislodged these crystals can can give you the false perception of motion and the epley maneuvers what they what they do is they try to get the crystals to move in a position or in a place that doesn't cause this so you do these weird head positions and you stuff need like to that. align your chakras bro. yeah exactly when you do it do you is it like instantly you can tell a difference Dude, or does it take so so mine was my left ear. So that's how I, so I identified it was my left ear. And what you do is I'll sit up. So I'm sitting upright. I'll look to the left and then I'll sit, I'll lay back real quickly. And I'll know it's my left ear because I'm looking to the left. I lay back and then my eyes go crazy. It's the craziest thing. And if I hadn't learned this, I trained an ear, nose and throat specialist years ago who I had mild vertigo and he did this for me. So that's how I knew it. Because if I didn't know this, I would have freaked out and thought I was getting a brain tumor. So I lay back, my my eyes go back and forth like boop, 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 <laughs> that boop, would trip me out. Dude. Fucking weird, and it feels terrible. You and then you wait, and it starts to calm down. Then it kind of stops. Then you change to the other position. So now I'm looking to the right. And then I move my body to the right, and then I sit up, and I do this, and I do it one or one to three times or whatever, and you feel a big relief in the vertigo, um, but then you still feel kind of uneasy. So like like today, I still it was two days later. I still feel a little bit. A little kind of off and weird, mm. but it, it was way better. Like it got way better, and that whole day I, I was pretty bad still, but it wasn't so bad to the point where, like, I couldn't walk, dude. It was really fucking. So me and Adam up. should hang you upside down. No, dude, <laughs> not at all. That'd be terrible. Yeah, that'd be a horrible. Do you, thing so right now you still don't feel one hundred percent normal. I feel like you say like you're on a boat or something. You know when you get off a boat. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Like I just got off a boat. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you have kind of like these moments where you're like, whoa. Just like a little in the background, kind of crappy. Yeah. You're like, yeah. ugh. You know, it makes you want to eat more, believe it or not. Oh, it does? Yeah, because uh, I don't know. You were eat, you were eating uh, like no carbs yesterday, huh? So yeah, so what I, yeah, so what I was doing is uh, some people believe that stress or lack of sleep or inflammation. I'm sure inflammation in the inner ear, ear can probably contribute to it. So I'm just like, look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go... Keto-ish, fast, try and bring down my inflammation. I got a lot of sleep that night. I went to bed at eight thirty uh, at night and um, just trying to nip it in the bud so it doesn't come yeah. back. But do you guys see all the uh, health IQ people that are all the all our forum members and stuff that are posting up their posting scores? Up Did their anybody scores? beat us? Yeah. No, no one's beat us yet. But it, uh, we had a couple people get close. I saw I saw one seventy six or one seventy eight this morning. Yeah, you're not gonna beat us. <laughs> it's just not gonna now happen. that you say that yeah bring, I feel like bring I, it go yeah. this is what you do go to health iq what's the website doug is it health iq dot com forward slash mind pump forward slash mind pump take their health iq test and if you beat our score me and adam got i think we got 186 yeah 186 i'm gonna double check because yeah, if one, it's if it's, it's higher than that no it's it's well that's what i think i'm almost positive that's what i got you are yeah yeah so, i took a picture of my other screen phone captured I, if i if you beat 186 post it on instagram and tag us well post it even if you don't beat i, I want to see everybody's score no i'm telling them like, oh, so, so my health iq is 186 out of 200 760 points it says if you beat that, tag us on Instagram, and uh, that way you can talk a little shit. I don't think anyone's going to beat us, though. 
That's the thing. Yeah. yeah no, my I, challenge is, interesting. I, I thought, dare you. Yeah. I dare you. There's some, there's some questions on there. I mean, going back now, I see how they positioned it. I could, I would have done better, but it was, they're bullshit to me. <laughs> I should, I shouldn't have missed any of those, dude. I was like, this it's, is, this is, I wanted to argue. I was, yeah. it's on the clock, right? So it's timing. And I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> this is not true. Get out of here. Some of the questions are, they try um, to trick you on a and couple when, of them. And they're not all, they're not super easy. No, no. The, I was actually, yeah. I was surprised. I thought, wow, if it's the average, detailed. yeah, if the average, now we have really smart people in the forum. So it makes sense to me to see these 170 scores, people passing and stuff like that. But, you know, if you're just like an average Jane or Joe with like no, you know, anatomy, physiology type of background, like those weren't easy. Yeah. Yeah, no. they were. They were. I've, I've taken some certification tests that were easier than that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so that easier questions than that. <laughs> yeah. So I can't wait for Justin to take it. Yeah. Um, I think he's it. nervous. Uh huh. I think he's nervous. I'll screen Probably. capture for you today. Yeah. You don't have to. Just want you to take it because, uh, you, know, I, you know. I want to make sure he doesn't cheat. We're trying to help him. Yeah. yeah, promote it a little bit. That's a good idea. It. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Show you. <laughs> just anyway. Just kind of. Yeah, but he's he. Well, you know, he hasn't been doing the health IQ, but he's been at least he's been using the Organifi stuff like crazy. Oh, so, dude. Yeah. 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 How are you liking that? At least you're on board with one of our sponsors. Yeah. yeah, but I'm not getting the you know the gold yet. So it's coming, dude. Okay, good. I think I'm it excited should, about that. Uh, Shauna said it should be here either today or next week. Doug, yeah. if that comes up, if that pops up anytime while we're recording all day today, I'd like to know so we could drink some of that today. Yeah, I'll go check it in the box. It's tasty and um, anti-inflammatory based and uh, calming. Now, do you know when we first got that gold drink, it came here. I opened the box. I saw it in there. One canister. Yeah. So I opened it up. Right. And I tried it. Mm-hmm. And it's very good. Oh, it you, you Very did. tasty. So, yeah, I, take, no, you so I set it down. I tried it. I set it down. And the next get day, it was gone. You can, Okay. Yeah, if, weird, you guys, huh? if you guys have not noticed this yet, Sal has a little bit of a, a problem. He's got a problem that he doesn't want to admit or share with he any of us. He is a supplement he, addict. He is. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. You I've, should see him at no, no. fitness he's, expos. No, I'm, he's, a, <laughs> I'm a supplement whore. Yeah, <laughs> very different. He he does these things that uh, I you know I catch him doing every once in a while. And the way he's like a like a, a a bear where he leaves like a trail of shit behind him. You know what I'm saying? Like I see the wrappers and I'm like, I go in the closet which <laughs> I organize so I know this right. So I organize all the supplements in an order so they're yeah. all nice and stuff. And I go in there and I'm like, every day I go in there and there's like a new box that's opened up and a fucking wrapper in there. And I'm just like, Powder just yeah, so I've, strewn everywhere. I've caught him in between sets and things that we're recording. He sneaks into the fucking closet mm-hmm. and he sucks down some of these powders and pills. Well, dude. If you were if you were a good, empathetic friend, you'd realize it was a call for help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm leaving little it's signs, little flags out there. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm going ha- to have to talk to Sean. I don't know how much longer we can keep these supplements for sponsors. Dude. No, I, I don't want you to get out of control. The only ones I use consistently. <laughs> Are, no, uh, it, it's not consistent. That's what's funny, is it's you're always trying something. Yeah, else. why not? <laughs> it's like you're making cocktails. Well, so cocktails in the closet. You know what it is. Uh, you know we have our sponsors because we like their stuff, but then we have all these other companies that send us stuff all the time. Yeah, and we don't talk about them. No, we don't talk about because we don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, if you sent us something and we haven't talked about it yet, I'm yeah. sorry. Or sometimes we try it and we get. I, I'm going to say we as a collective here get so high from it. <laughs> yeah, that we it. can't talk about. Oh, that's, that's something else that's happened. Uh, yeah. That's when we got that that cannabis uh, Dude, spritz or whatever. But, uh, no, not just that. The the first the the green one that one got me really good, and then we then the the newest soda one. I mean that I remember the guy was telling me he's like, oh yeah, one can's like nothing. I drank like a half a can of that stuff, and I was lit, dude. I'm a cannabis smoker, dude. I yeah. smoke pretty regularly. They make some of these things like too way, strong, way too scary. strong, too strong, too scary, way too strong. Like, yeah. I want to be able to enjoy the whole soda. I don't want to open that, a soda and have half. What of What does it. that tell you about the market? Oh, I, you, it's a bunch of stoners running it. Well, this, well this, not just that. Well, when I ran the clubs, this is what was the challenge, right? So when we when we started when we started them, we were trying to like legitimize them and, and appeal to the you know seventy year old grandma that has arthritis and you know people that are like that, and then like this young kid who their parent comes in. Like we really wanted to provide this like professional environment, and it just wasn't there yet. Mm. And that wasn't a they, they were they represented the ten percent. The ninety percent were people that were just trying to get the strongest. I was going to say it seems shit. like a competition to just see who can put out the strongest. Absolutely, version. Here's, Abs- absolutely. Where cookies are ten dosers and yeah. shit like that. Look, yeah. I'm pro legalization. I'm pro do whatever you want to your body. Uh, there's definite benefits of cannabis, but don't fucking bullshit me and tell me it doesn't have addictive properties when you've got motherfuckers taking who need 
50 to 100 milligrams of THC in a serving. Just to feel high. Just to feel it. You're yeah. addicted, homie. Yeah. You got a problem. And right. there's a lot of people with a problem with this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And well, and, you know, and it's a sensitive place to touch, right? Because most people start with it just like anything else because they're medicating something, some condition or whatever that hurts them. But it's no different to me than seeing somebody who gets addicted to painkillers and starts with that. It's like, safer. I understand. It's yeah, definitely safer. Absolutely. Probably not going to kill you, all that stuff. But. You've got a little bit of an issue going on. Let's be honest. It, it is addictive. Anything that, by the way, anything that you like is addictive. Mm. It doesn't have to have necessarily physiological addictive properties. Well, it can be behavioral based. I That's mean, right. you, get, you have behavioral addiction to it for sure. That's which right. I, I mean, I'm always very aware when I catch myself that way. When I find this, like, I just naturally go to go have my joint at five o'clock at night every single night, and I catch myself doing that back to back nights. It's like. Okay, like I don't need to do that every single night. You know what I'm saying? Like this is not one of those nights where I really need to set the. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, I, but I will say this: I'll make this argument all day long, and I guarantee I, I'll, I'll bet I'll bet money on this that we are going to start to see because now it's it's uh, easier to study. There's more people using it. We are already seeing now. There's a there's a there was a rare, it's still rare a rare condition where if you use too much cannabis, you develop this condition where you have this constant vomiting. No joke. And it's a result of overexposure to phytocannabinoids. We're now seeing hmm. it on the rise because wow. people have more okay. access to higher potencies of cannabis. They're using lots and lots of it. It's not toxic, so they're just pushing the doses. Now you're getting more and more people where we never – this was a very rare condition. We're seeing it on the rise now where people are going to the hospital and they're like, I can't stop puking. What's wrong with me? And it's, it's because of the abuse of these, of these phytocannabinoids that are found in cannabis. But – they like to say that there's no physiological dependency. That's also bullshit. The reason why we have can cannabinoid receptors in our body in the first place is because we make our own cannabinoids called endocannabinoids. If I'm taking something externally constantly, it is not hard to understand that my body will start to reduce or eliminate uh, right. its own production <clears throat> of cannabinoids. So I'm now going to develop... A dependency because I am replacing what my body is supposed to be making with its own endocannabinoids. So now, if I go off, I'm going to go off. I'm going to go through this withdrawal period, which can be mild if you compare it to the withdrawal that you go through with opiates and alcohol and all other stuff. Oh, it's very but it's mild still condition. it still is in, in you it's know. still a challenge for some people. Sure. And if you, it depends on what. Low, and so, hey, bro, if you need fifty to hundred milligrams, it's not because your tolerance is higher. It's because you've been smoking a lot of fucking weed. Like you just, it's time to back off for a little. The crazy part, though, with what I love about cannabis is you take like three days off in a row, dude, and it's and it's like back to day one again. Yeah, it's crazy, you know. So it's not like it takes a ton to like reset that. It's it's not like it's not like pills or alcohol. Like you go through that. Like I've been through that. Like that's a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Like that's coming off that is crazy. Sweats and shakes. Oh, you and, can actually die. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, yeah. coming off weeds, like, no, it's like a little bit of discipline. Like, dude, pass on the <laughs> joint for fucking two or three days. Yeah, you're going to have some weird dreams for a few nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some vivid, sleep, but, some yeah. vivid ass dreams. Yeah, you Did might. I tell you guys about my dream the other day? I never remember my dreams. I never remember my dreams. Let's and, interpret it. <clears throat> and I, ha and I, I had- I did, a, I helped him. Oh, okay. And I yeah. had this vivid dream- we were all in, we were at some like, I don't know where we were, right? We were at like a, in somebody's garage. Is this the one where you had sex with Doug? No, no, no. Oh, that okay, one. that's the other no, one. No, no, no. Sorry. That's, that's an I, old dream. I don't want to interpret yeah. that. <laughs> it's easy to interpret. That yeah. one's easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I pretty worked, straightforward. I, I, we worked through that one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this dream, we're, I, we're, in a, we're in a, and I never remember these things, I swear. Like, so it's, it's always fascinating to me, like if one like sticks to where, not only do I remember it in the morning, but I can remember to repeat it or share it. To me, that doesn't ever ha that hardly ever happens. So this one, we're in this garage. Uh, someone has like a little at home gym working out, and for some reason, like we're there, we're there right away. Like I don't know why. And you guys are all there too. You guys are kind of standing out in the front of this house, and I'm in the garage talking to the guy, and he's a fan of the show. He's a, he's like a mind pump fan, and he's telling me like how he how he found the show. Like oh yeah, I used to follow Craig Caperso. He's a buddy. I'm like oh yeah, Craig, it's my boy. Yeah, and, and we're kind of like chopping it up back and forth. He's like, man, I don't want to sound like really silly or anything like that, but could I get an autograph? And I go to give him an autograph, and I can't fucking sign my name. <laughs> I can't. I just, my hands don't work. I can't figure out how to put it together. Like, I, And it's fucking freaking me out. Like, it, inside, like, I'm trying to act cool in front of him. Like, it's no big deal. And, like, I'm... I'm <laughs> Your head's I'm, not working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it reminds me, right? It, it, the only dream I could ever remember that reminds me of this was when I was a kid. And I haven't had this dream since I was a kid. When I was a kid, I used to have that dream where 
my mom would drop me off for school. I'd get out of the car, and then all of a sudden I'd be naked. Yeah. And then I couldn't run away. Like people would be yeah. chasing me, and I couldn't run fast enough. I all of a sudden I'm in slow motion, right? So mm-hmm. that was a dream I had. So it was it, that feeling of anxiety of not being able to like get away it was the same feeling that I had with signing mm-hmm. my name. That's, so that's not hard to interpret. I know, not at all, right? I think yeah. it's really funny. It's, though, it's you know? funny because so there's a lot of theories on dreams and what they mean, and all, sometimes they mean nothing, and sometimes. And what what ha- the one that I subscribe to, the one at least that resonates most with me, is that you'll have a feeling or an emotion inside of you, and when you sleep, your brain tries to make sense of that emotion oh, and it I creates totally scenarios. Agree. Totally agree it. with that. So if you're super self conscious, if you don't like the way you look, if you feel like you're mm-hmm. ugly, you may have a dream where your teeth are falling out or your hair is falling out or whatever. If you feel like you're going to be exposed, like I don't want people to know about me, I don't want people to see what's going on. You may show up naked somewhere, right? Yeah. That what yours sounds like to me, and I'm not an expert in this, but it sounds to me like uh, there's an anxiety or fear of not being ready for success. Like it's gonna things are gonna explode. Right. You're gonna be successful, and then I'm gonna fuck up, or I'm not ready for it, or, or it's the anxiety surrounding it. it. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. If anything, I think it's good because it shows that. It's coming to the forefront. It's- well, that you're thinking about it, right? Yeah. Like I, I definitely agree with you because, and then when you, if you really were to pull the uh, unpack the dream, like uh, I had just recently talked to Craig the day before, so that makes sense. I'm always seeing you guys, so it makes sense that you guys were in there. I watched Juji work out in his garage all the time, so the garage setting kind of looked like his garage. You know what I'm saying? So there's yeah. a lot, and we've I've had people ask for autographs and things like that. So it's like. All those, th- and that that's happened more recently than before, mm-hmm. right? So all these things are like fresh in my mind, and that's this is my this is like you said, this is my mind trying to piece it all together, like how, what I'm feeling. That's you know? interesting. You said the one about like like losing your teeth. Mine wasn't losing my teeth, but it was grinding to where my teeth were like crumbling when mm-hmm. I was talking to somebody, and my teeth were just coming like sawdust. And, yeah, like turned into powder, and I'm like, <laughs> all, <laughs> all gone, all gone. Yeah, I, was, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna need dentures. No, <laughs> yeah. and I woke up, and oh my god, that was horrible. Yeah, dreams are interesting uh mysteries interesting fucking mysteries man yeah. like you go to sleep first off if you think about sleeping it makes no evolutionary sense it literally makes no evolutionary sense think about it this way you are constantly at threat with predators and stuff you need food for most of human civilization we starved all the time mm-hmm. you need food you should probably it would benefit you to not sleep. It would benefit you to be awake and to work and to search for food and to hide and to be aware of your surroundings. It makes no sense to be in this state where shit can sneak up on you, eat you, where you're eight hours of the of the day or whatever you're wasting, you're not doing anything, and you're just sitting there in this this unless like we're so huge, vulnerable. unless we're tapped into a huge operating system and it makes sense that we have to charge up we every single, we got to charge in every either that or yeah right. or you unplug right. right. That's right. when you're off the video game. Right. You're playing a video game for you know. 16 hours or whatever and right. then for 8 hours you're, you're burning the car, car, car yeah cartridge. you don't want to overheat it yeah. and yeah. you could push it you could push it 2 days sometimes yeah. maybe 3 no sleep but you keep pushing too much longer you'll blow up man. missing you die. Uh, uh, more recent studies show just one night of not sleeping and the vast majority of uh, people subjects in the studies have display signs of schizophrenia Totally healthy people, yeah, showing that they're going crazy after one missing one night. That is yeah. crazy. One night, isn't that like the? I mean, the form of torture. Like half the time, they're just like fucking with people, like as they're sleeping to wake well, them back I, up. Bro, have you some- guys ever? You guys ever? We just had. I just had this the other night. Katrina and I both did. Her and I were up by like four in the morning, and we like worked all day here. She worked a long old day. Then we came home. We had a ton of mind pump stuff to work on. We worked it. We worked all the way till like midnight, and I remember at about like eight o'clock or so. Uh, we both kind of looked at each other and we were, we were acting goofy. Like we were just, all of a sudden I went yeah, beyond tired. Like when you get beyond tired, you get kind of delusional a little bit and you just, things are silly and goofy and I have this like new, I find that fascinating. It's yeah. happened to me multiple times when I've pushed through like there, when I should go to sleep. There right? are some scary uh, studies from the Soviet Union and from <laughs> Nazi Germany on sleep deprivation because they did some experiments on people scary shit if you look up and i and i tell you i warn you if you read up on some of these studies you will have trouble uh sleeping because it's they're terrifying what's happened to some of these people just from sleep deprivation they just go like psychotic oh they they do crazy horrible i don't even talk about some of the stuff that they would do to themselves and to other people and the psychosis that would involve after like a few days 
after a few few days of sleep deprivation. Oh wow! Yeah, really scary stuff. So anyway, I wanted to say to you guys because uh, I have more time in the car in the mornings now because um, I don't take carpool anymore. <laughs> you gotta lay uh, lay low just yeah. for a little bit. I oh. didn't know. I didn't know the ticket goes up after after like it keeps oh, going man. up. Oh, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, because this is this is a this is a pattern that I've had yeah. in the past. Do you have to wait like three months or what? I think yeah, because I at one point I got three carpool tickets. It's probably a year actually, and I think they double oh, every shit. time because that's what it is with the speed. So I almost lost my license when I was a kid when I was 17 uh, from like tr- speeding tickets. Right, it's. Four t- well, I don't know what it is now, but when I, I was a four kid, points, it was, it was four tickets in a in a year. Like if you if you got nailed for four tickets, so I had three. I got the fourth one, and so I went to the court to fight the four because I thought, well, even though I had no leg to really stand on, it was like fuck it. I, have, I did get my license. I got to try and fight this because if I don't, I'm going to lose it for a year. It's going to get suspended or whatever. And so I show up to court, and luckily the cop didn't show up, oh, so yeah. they so threw, it out. threw it out. And yeah. so I was like, oh, phew, oh no, save I my had ass. my license taken, but uh, oh, or did? suspended. Yeah, I did. It was suspended. So uh, that's had, when I was younger. You had more than three tickets in a year? Well, dude, do you know how much I used to pay for car insurance? So I drove Is this a, a Geico commercial. No, I'm yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, we, yeah, are we sponsored by Geico yeah, now? Yeah, we should be. Rad. Hey, Geico. I was. Uh, I drove a Volkswagen Golf. VR6. So it's like a little, you know, rice rocket or whatever, even though it's German, you know, those little type of cars. I, it was considered a performance car under the insurance, but it's not. Anyway, I couldn't get insurance for it. They wouldn't give me insurance for it. So through a kind of a weird loophole or whatever, my dad was insured with my Volkswagen so I could drive it, but I had to have insurance. Mm. So I got insurance for my dad's 1978 Chevy work van. So we had this big work van. <laughs> Nor under normal circumstances, how much like do you panel think panel without the uh, windows? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. How much do you think it would be to insure a car like that that is old and whatever? It'd be like fifty bucks a month, twenty bucks a month, right? Because it's not an expensive car. It's not. It's a big van, right? That's the only thing I could get insurance for. Number one, and it didn't cost me fifty bucks a month. Do you guys know how much I paid when I was, let's see, nineteen years old, nineteen and 20, 21 years old for my dad's nineteen seventy eight work van? Hmm. I paid over twelve hundred dollars a month. What? Yeah. What? Just That's how bad. Nineteen? No, that and also my driving, record, driving record was so bad. You actually paid that? Well, I, I would have, wouldn't be able to drive. I had to, so I paid twelve hundred bucks a month. On health, I had special insurance for high risk drivers. Bro. Wow, <laughs> mine was really bad, and I was oh, nowhere man. near that. Whoa, yeah. I think, I, I, think the, I think I peaked out at like four hundred and something dollars, oh, no, no, no. which I was, was, over, which was over that's thousand crazy. Bucks. Like if you're a kid, you know, teenager, you know, yep. that's like all my money just so I could drive. I was over, but you know, luckily I was making a ton of money, you know, managing gyms and stuff at a young age. But and part of it was because the first gym that I managed was uh, in Salinas because they gave me the small club, right? So you were my, fucking flying on the road. Oh, bro, I used to put the, the cruise control on 105 uh, Salinas, miles an hour all the yeah. way down 101, and then I got tickets in that double fine zone. Yeah. Dude, oh. Just don't go to, through King City. Yeah. Oh, It'll fuck you dude, up. Dude, I I can count. I got three tickets. Oh, that. I 100% have at least at least seven or eight tickets in the, my entire time of going because I used to go to Cal Poly. My girlfriend went yeah. to Cal Poly. That's like their number one source of revenue. Yeah, they get you by the plane. The plane they get got you. Me. Yo, yeah. I've been. I the plane's got me. They've came up behind me. They've whipped around, going the opposite yeah. direction, like King it's, City. It's a fucking business, dude. Oh, it's because man. you used to go visit down to yeah. Santa, Cal Poly. And I Same also, thing with me. And like an asshole, I, just, I drove in high school. I, I drove like hundred something. This rice little rocket Toyota Tercel piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, like drove, like I drove pressing a, it to the gills. A red fucking rice rocket with fucking stickers all over it. Oh, yeah, you're a target, yeah, 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 you're dude. I was like, yeah, like you had like two hundred horsepower. Back then, it was a lot. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> yeah. You know what? You want to hear what bullshit it is, though? What an, you want to talk about an inefficient bullshit system to get people to drive the speed limit? It's all about collecting money and paying people salaries for this bullshit. Because the reality is, <laughs> if we really wanted people to not speed, you would just have speed limiters on all the cars. As soon as they get produced, this car can't go faster than 75 miles an that hour. Suck. Problem solved. Uh. Part of it is people say that sucks, but the reality is if they really want to slow everybody down so they don't speed... That's what they would do, but they don't do it because then they'd have to eliminate They'll jobs. Revolt. They, yeah, come yeah. on, man. Right, right, right. Fucking we, bullshit. They like it when you speed. Yeah, because yeah. they can give you a ticket. You know who's going to be against automated self-driving cars big time? A lot of people. highway patrol. Yeah, oh yeah. You're going to have oh That's a good point. Oh dude, you're going to have a lot of issues with police because 
no more DUIs, so that's going to reduce work. You're going to have nobody, ma- you know, sitting on the side of the fri- freeway watching people speed. Great. It's going to you're you the know people are going to be against it. It'd be interesting. Be to, for other you know, things. I'm going to I'll have to ask some of my buddies that are CHPs and sheriffs and cops what they think about that because that's that'd be interesting to ask. And I know we have a lot. Their of, unions will be against it. Well, I was going to say I don't know if, how much they would be against it though because. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them don't like that part of the job. It's probably yeah, like they have to do it just right, to get quota. Right, yeah. right. As soon as they I, see though, as soon as they starts to see that they're that they're looking at oh, we're cutting this many positions because we don't need anybody now to do this, then they'll be against it. Yeah. As soon as it threatens your job, your livelihood, your regular way of life, that's when people don't like progress. Because mm-hmm. now, you know, I tell you what, when cars were invented, people who made wagons were pissed off. hundred percent. Because now they they have no business. They're not making wagons anymore. You know, you need to save my job. So, yeah. so like taxi drivers protesting Uber. There's cities, you know, there's cities that <laughs> ban Uber because of these taxi unions and shit. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Yeah. Austin was like that. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Fuck Dude, you know, it's weird too, talking about like, you know, police and, and, and law enforcement and all that. Like, you know, that those cities that actually have predictive crime algorithms now that have kind of taken over and like, this is becoming a thing now where it's like they can actually How do you guys like feel about that? I'm kind of pro that. I like that. I think that's kind of cool. I think if I think if they're not infringing on anybody's liberties, yeah. then do it. Yeah. I think when they start infringing on our liberties and they start right. enacting I, I think if you're using it like this like okay, when we look at this efficiency. over the last 10 years you know, more crime happens in this area by seventy five percent. At so, this time of night, right? This you time know, of night, so like, we're going to make sure that we patrol here. Yeah, let's just patrol no, here. That just makes sense, right? Yeah. Makes- but if it turns into like, I'll give you an example: random DUI checks. So they have a stop, uh, and I know, I know the arguments. It helps reduce, you know, deaths, all that stuff. But when there's search and seizure without probable cause, that's an infringement of liberty. So if they say, if the algorithm says. Uh, you know, males between this age, this race, or whatever. Therefore, let's go search in these people randomly because mm-hmm. that's what our algorithm says. Now we are giving up uh, an essential liberty, yeah, and yeah. you don't want to go down that fucking path. I don't care yeah. how effective it is, because when you give up liberty for safety, you end up with neither. That's just historically how it works. So I love the algorithms. I just don't don't infringe on my liberty. Like don't don't bullshit me and say. Hey, to keep everybody safe, we need to wiretap everybody. We need to be able to have access to everybody's email, everybody's phone. We need to be able to go through your mail. We need to be able to go in your house whenever we want to make sure you're not a bad guy. And if you if you're not doing anything wrong, you have nothing to worry about. That argument is is what the so it's what the communists did. It's what mm. Nazis did. It's what uh, all tyranny. This, uh, regime co- this conversation reminds me of one of the questions that I picked today. Yeah, that we have oh, coming yeah. up. Yeah. But get- before, before we get in there, I want to say real, real nice thing about both of you guys. I really, in the car today, because I was in traffic, because I wasn't taking carpool, what I was going to say is I really appreciate, one of the things I appreciate about both of you guys more than anything is your willingness to step out of your comfort zone and to challenge yourselves. Uh, I was thinking about you, Adam, doing, you know, right now going through your low testosterone you know, saga and having to deal with all that. And I know what a challenge that is for any man, but especially to somebody who used to identify so much with being muscular and strong and all that stuff uh, and have, how, much, how much accolades that those things brought you. I really appreciate both you guys doing that kind of stuff and spe- stepping out of, your, out of your comfort zone. It challenges me. It makes me a better person mm-hmm. and it humbles the fuck out of me. And, uh, I, you know, it's rare you find individuals that do that with such grace and without sitting there tooting their own horn or, or you know, identifying with it, just doing it, it's fucking awesome. So I want to say- I, I definitely think that's cool. something that uh, that that bonds all of us. Yeah. You know, I think that was, you, you talk about, we're, we're all very different. I think part of why people enjoy the show is because we couldn't be more different in a lot of other areas. But probably the thing that, that bonds us the most would be that those traits, I think. I think it's one of the traits that I think everybody is attracted to the other guys about, and it sounds weird to say that, but it's true. You know, that's, I think that is, uh, there's not a lot of people that do that, you know, and a lot of people make excuses or like you said, a lot of people want to, if they do do those things, they want to toot their horn or look at me or I feel sorry for, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, everybody kind of handles their shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody handles their shit and is always stretching themselves. So, you know, I 100% agree with yeah, you. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Yeah, we only get better if we are we all have that shared common interest. Well, you know? part of it is uh, selfish. Part of the reason why I appreciate it is I get to see you guys do this, and then it makes me do it more myself. So yeah. I benefit from what you guys are going through 
as well because you do it with such grace and, and uh, it, in such in humble ways. So Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you, dude. No D- problem. Doug, bring on the sensitive bird, please. Yeah. <laughs> give, give me a hug, bird. <laughs> is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-quad. All right, our first question is from Ander Beth. I'm constantly being told that lifting weights won't make women bulky, but I can just look at a weight and put on muscle. Am I an exception to the rule? Is it genetic? I love this question. You lucky because girl. You, I love this question because I have heard this statement at least a thousand <laughs> times. Nauseam. At least a thousand times in my career. Yep. Yeah. At least that. And it's, you know what's funny about this? It still you know, is there. You know what's Possibly. funny about this? So yes, I have also, all of us, right? We've heard this so many times from women. The reality is it's such a small percentage of people. I can count on one hand the amount of women that I've met yeah. that do build muscle like this. And uh, Usually but it's, they're on testosterone. But it's countless how many women say that they can do this. So right, right. we're not not discrediting what you're saying. You could very well you very well you could be the exception to the rule. You could very well be a genetic anomaly. The reason why we're saying this though is because nine ninety nine percent of the time when women say this, it's because they lift weights and they gain body fat. Mm, and they say, right. oh, weights make me bulky. And it's like, no, watch your nutrition and then see what happens. Right. Because you could gain, as a woman, you could gain a solid eight pounds of muscle, which, by the way, if you are gaining, if you're a man, if you're a man and you gain eight solid pounds of muscle, you are kicking ass. You're you're crushing. Well, let's let's put that in perspective. Uh, I can't remember where, where I read this article, but they talked about uh, the average professional bodybuilder that's on anabolic steroids and is a genetic freak is extremely happy with adding ten pounds of muscle a year. Mm-hmm. A year. A year. Yeah. On anabolic steroids, genetic freak, training like a fucking maniac. If they can add ten pounds of lean mass every single year. That's a huge feat. So put that in perspective. Like you're probably not the genetic freak. You're probably not running a bunch of steroids, but it, more of that, it's it's your own perception of yourself, right? Mm. And and a lot of that is distorted because we see our like our pant size, right? Or our, our legs. All of a sudden, we're we're wearing these our favorite yoga pants or something, and they feel tighter, and they feel water. tighter than they ever feel. And all of a sudden, you go, like, oh. But, but let me tell you, on there's so many factors that can manipulate that. You could have easily have taken in some extra sodium the day before and drink an extra glass or two of water and now all of a sudden your body's holding on to so, many, so much water. You could have ate 50 more grams of carbohydrates that day and now your body's pairing and holding on to more water and now you're... So there's a lot of things that you could be doing that makes it feel like you're getting fatter but you're really not getting fatter mm-hmm. or getting bulkier. What's happening is you're you know, holding on to a little bit of weight which could be water weight or you, you, uh, if you're lucky, you're building some muscle and if you're building some muscle, you're only speeding your metabolism out, which is only going to help you lean out. But it definitely, if you're eating in a caloric deficit and you're lifting heavy weight and lifting to to be bulky, you're going to build an incredible physique. Yeah, and I'll uh, I want to address the genetic freaks in a second, but first, before I do that, I'm going to give you an example that's kind of the reverse. I was so afraid when I was working out for years, especially when I, in the early days, I was so afraid drop of losing weight. I was so afraid of being skinny that if I lost a half a pound or if I felt any semblance of being smaller, I freaked out to the point where I never got shredded for, deca- for decades. I mean, mm-hmm. lifting weights from 14 till now, mm-hmm. the first time I really, really, really got shredded, I think I was like, 28. Oh, dude. That was I, the first time. I've shared that I went 30 years with never trying to lose body fat. Right. 30 years of my life, I lifted to build muscle and get bigger because I always thought so I was- So afraid. Yeah. So afraid. So at one point, I, got, I, I faced that fear. I let myself get lean. I felt smaller in my sweaters. I felt smaller in my shirts. Oh my God, I'm getting skinny. And then next thing I know, I see definition in my muscles. Next thing you know, I'm getting ripped. Next thing you know, people are telling me I look bigger, and it helped me get over my fear. Now, women, many women, 
are on the other side of that. Yeah, exa- it's the exact opposite. Yes, they're so afraid of gaining any kind of weight or size that for them it's, oh shit, I'm getting bulky. And part of the problem is, look, women's clothes are designed for women without muscle. If you have any kind of shape to your mm-hmm. body, any kind of glutes, any kind of hamstrings or quads, any kind of delts, you put on your regular women's sizes, you're gonna f- they don't fit you all of a sudden. Like, oh fuck, my clothes don't fit, I'm getting too big. That is such a rare thing to see in women. I Like I said, I can count on one hand mm. all the years I've worked in fitness. And I worked in fitness. In other words, I worked with female trainers. I worked with female competitors. I worked with people who are all more genetically gifted than the average. And on one hand, I can count the amount of women I've met where I'm like, wow, you really do build muscle like a man. Now, if you are that genetic freak and you do gain eight pounds of muscle, which is a lot. If you gained eight lean pounds of muscle without a single ounce of body fat, you'd be barely bigger, barely bigger because right. muscle is so dense. Yeah. It's a very dense tissue. It's not like fat. Like if you gain eight pounds of body fat, it's, it's you could see it. It creates a lot of space. Mm-hmm. Eight pounds of muscle, you'll be a tiny bit bigger. bigger. You're going to feel harder. I guarantee the, the the bulky feeling has to do with calories, carbs, and fear, sodium, and, and water. Oh, like yeah. those, I guarantee those are the things that are making you feel that way. Which you know, I, I tell you what, I couldn't break out of this, so I can totally relate. I totally understand because just like Sal, this is the exact same thing except for on the other side for us, right? And it wasn't until I actually decided to say, okay, I'm going to get as shredded as I possibly can. Who cares if I lose a bunch of muscle? That's not the goal. That was a very hard transition for me to make, and it was a mental struggle. And if it wasn't for the fact that I was going to get on stage and compete, I don't know if I would have ever done it. So I can totally relate and understand the challenge that it is mentally because you see yourself a certain way. You get on the scale. You see these little things go up and down. But it's amazing how much we can fluctuate day to day based off those things I'm talking about with calories, carbs, sodium, water. All that stuff will fluctuate your body day and day. And it's not a true sign of muscle and fat just because your clothes are fitting in a certain way. And the only way you'll break this is you'll, you'll, you'll have to just give in and say, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to train this way. I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to lift like I'm trying to be bulky. I'm going to lift like I'm trying to build muscle for a while, but I'm going to eat like I'm trying to stay lean and be consistent with that long enough. And watch what happens. And watch what happens. And watch what happens. But you can't do that for one week or two weeks, and then that's yeah. it. Like it's not, That's not- like- so, so, I, so this experience is similar to like my girlfriend. So my girlfriend, she's, I, I wouldn't say she's uh, one of the people that I've, one of the women I've seen that builds muscle like a man, but she's definitely- up there. She definitely builds muscle way better than most women I've ever met. She's got this ability just to put on muscle. And she's built like she she can put on muscle really well. But she was also afraid of being bulky and big. And so, you know, I've been with her now for a couple of years and she's dealt with some metabolic damage and we've brought her calories up and her metabolism's faster. But she never really allowed herself to go above, I'd say, 1,800 calories. Now, that sounds like a decent amount, but for a woman that lifts weights and works out almost every single day, who's got a decent amount of muscle, it's really not that many calories. No, Way more not. than what it was. Mm-hmm. She used to gain weight on anything over 1,100 calories, but now she's consuming 1,800. She was relatively lean, working out, whatever. And so recently I've, con- I've, I've like convinced her, like, just fucking go on a bulk. Like, let's bump your calories up and see what happens. So she's been doing this for a little while and, and not weighing herself. She hasn't gone on the scale at all. And the funny – and so in her mind, she's like – she would say things like, God, my arms look like – really good and i'm like well you're you're built probably you're building a little bit of muscle and i'd be telling her like you're putting on more muscle like this is really cool she'd be like oh you know I, I i know i've gained a lot of weight but that's okay and she's kind of talking herself out of it i've gained a lot of weight but that's okay i've gained a lot of weight but that's okay so the other day i told her tomorrow i said when you go to work because she trains at this gym i said step on the scale let me know how much you weigh she's like okay so she goes over there she weighs herself she she weighs i think a pound heavier maybe two pounds heavier you, mostly the result of the fact that she weighed herself later in the day and had clothes on. So I said, well, there you go. With probably, you know what happened? She lost a little body fat, a little right, bit of body fat and right. gained some muscle. But in her mind, she's like, I'm consuming 2,200 calories a day. I'm getting bigger and I got to be okay with that. And that hadn't happened. And Katrin- she's tripping out right now. Katrina yeah. and I dated for three years before we we made this switch for her. Because I I learned a long time ago that like, you know, who am I to impose you know, me and what I think you should be doing training wise. Like, and she was a 
run three to five times a, a week for an hour at a time, intense hills and shit like that. She, every one of her training sessions, she was fully geared up in hoodies and sweats and doing plyos for an entire hour and then the Stairmaster for 30 minutes. She And she treated her workouts the same way that she approached uh, her playing basketball. She was an athlete all the way through college, like... So everything was balls to the wall. And with sometimes it, she was in great shape because she was balls to the wall and her diet was dialed in. And then sometimes she wasn't so great because she was eating off all, all off the rails, but it, she but she was still always training. So when she would when we first started dating, like this is just kind of this cycle she went in. She was always in good shape. Like Katrina's never been like I never saw her fat. Like she never got above 14, 15% body fat for a female, which is really low. But she just assumed that her shape of her body, the way it looks, would never change. I said, "Well, you've never really changed. You've never really trained to sculpt your body." And she's like, "Well, what do you mean? I don't. I, yes, I do. I do weights." I go, well, "No, you don't. You do like cardio with weights. Like that's all you're doing is like you're building endurance right now and stamina. You're not building muscle. Like we're not sculpting your body and mm-hmm. shaping you. Like you got to you. If you build some muscle, you could change the way you you look." And she's like, "Nah." And she wouldn't. She just was not having it. And one day she finally came to me and she goes, okay, what would you do? And the irony is now the woman does not run. Okay. She doesn't do any cardio whatsoever. If she does any cardio, it's walking on the treadmill. Okay. Or walking on a hot, we do hikes all the time. She eats 2,400 to 2,600 calories a fucking day. And she she's lifts, not a big woman. And yeah. she she's li- not a mess of and she isn't, li- this, isn't this a gross generalization, but like, have you guys found like in your career that most of the time, Women have the hardest time resting and going through like a strength phase. Of course, yeah, because it's been yeah. tattooed. It's, in it's been tattooed in everybody's the head. Hardest time to get it. In you got to burn. You got to burn. You got to yeah. burn. If you want to burn fat, you got to burn. You got to burn. You got to move. You got to move. You got to move. And that and that is exactly the, her mentality. Now it's great. It's I love having her talk to women like this because she can relate so much and tell them like, listen, I thought the same thing too. And now all she does is squat, deadlift, and good mornings, bro, overhead press. It, it changes like, everything. Bro, yeah, I is, mean, once once Courtney is the same thing with you guys. It's and like, it's easier. Once they buy into it and, and they see what it does to their body, it's like, wow, it finally starts to resonate. But it takes a long time to get that, you know, to, to penetrate. It's the exact opposite, but same thing that I went through. Yeah. I was so afraid so of- on the total opposite I was side. so afraid of missing a meal or so afraid of not stuffing my i got to the point where if i didn't feel stuffed like if i didn't feel like fuck i just ate a whole bunch of food you're gonna lose yeah i'm like oh i gotta eat real quick like i had to feel like i'm stuffing myself all the time well that started feeling comfortable how many times did you make this decision and this is exactly again the exact opposite the the women that are in her shoes this is what they do you and it is the opposite of what we do i would and like I would weigh myself in the morning, afternoon, night, like because I was wanting to gain so bad, right? And if it was afternoon time, and I knew at that time like where my weight needed to be, yeah. so the next morning I woke up yeah. as heavy or heavier. Right. And so a no. lot of times, you know, I get busy with work. I'd be working for like six hours straight. I fucking miss two meals in there. I get on the scale. Holy shit! I'm I'm a pound a pound and a half down behind. And yeah, so panic. I'm driving home, and my decision of what I would eat. Oh God! It's like I would jack in the box. Yes, I would go to McDonald's, yeah. and I would get two Big Macs and twenty piece McNugget and a McFlurry because. You know what? I was so afraid that I would lose muscle. I just got diarrhea right now. Isn't that crazy, bro? Yeah. So we, no, we're listen, the same person. Listen, bro. So listen, weird. though. Listen, this is the same thing yeah, that she goes through, but the opposite, right? So you, these women, they get on the scale and they look and they go, "Oh shit!" Like I'm, I'm, already, I've already put a pound on, and all I had was a couple glasses of water and hardly anything. So what do they do? They get on a treadmill and run, or they don't eat. They skip a meal, yeah. or they just have a salad instead. It's like they don't feed their Bro, body what it needs. The mind games yeah. you play with yourself are so hilarious. First off, we're the same person. You tell these stories like it's just like I'm. It's exactly what I did. Yeah. I used to, I would weigh myself. With my clothes on before I went before I took a shit. Why? Because I'd be heavier on the scale. <laughs> There's you know women will not yeah. weigh themselves unless it's in the morning, in no the morning, food, yeah, naked, fasted. Yeah. yeah. Even though they know that if they gained a couple pounds it's because they have clothes on and they ate a meal, mm-hmm. it fucks with them so much that I'm not even gonna step on the scale. I already ate. I already ate a meal and I got my clothes on. Yep. I would do the same, but the opposite. Like yeah, oh like no no the no. End of the day. Yeah, I gotta yep. eat first before I weigh myself because I want to make sure that scale says right right. Extra. So silly. It, it is crazy. It yeah. is, but it's a mind fucking a half. Um, I I would be willing to bet everything that I have 
that you're probably, I just looked at, I, her profile's private, but even just looking at I can tell she's, I mean, she'd have, if you were one of these genetic freaks, you'd have a fucking neck. You know, you'd, you'd have a neck and traps and you'd look crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, traps you're not that stacked. chick at all, right? You'd look so, like a linebacker. Yeah and, yeah, and honestly, if you're like Sal's girl or Katrina too can put on muscle pretty well. But there's still not like Ser- Serena Williams. Yeah. Like, there's a woman right. that I could see that builds muscle like crazy. Right, right. Right? right. But she's rare. Right. That yeah. is super rare. Yeah, and you can see those girls. You can see those girls. I mean, they're- They don't even have to lift weights. Yeah, it's very obvious when, when there's a girl that has this, that's just a- Just like with guys. I feel like the guys, I mean, men and women are the same here as far as the, the spectrum of mm-hmm. genetic freaks versus average Joes. You know, most of us are all average Joes. And then every once in a while, you see the guy who doesn't follow a nutrition plan, has terrible programming. They stand but, out. Yeah, but he, and he's got fucking perfectly round delts so, and chest. So it's, it's uh, think of it this way. If you are- one of those women that literally has the genetics to build ridiculous amounts of muscle where it's just too much, okay? Go do it. Hold, well, hold on. <laughs> if you are one of those women, it's as rare, okay? I'll make this and I'll stand by this. It's as rare seeing somebody who's seven feet tall. Now, walk around outside. Tell me, actually, think to yourself, how many times besides going to an NBA game right. have you ever seen someone that's seven feet tall? It's extre- It's so rare that if you saw one today, you'd remember it. In fact, you probably remember that one time you saw someone right. yeah. that was seven feet tall. That's how rare it is. Most so you pe- probably are not this. Most people are average Joes, but they identify with the extremes yeah. because that's the where the insecurities lie, mm-hmm. right? Like if you were to ask me as a kid growing up the entire all the way till I was thirty years old, I would tell you that oh I am for sure a hard gainer the hardest of hard gainers yeah hardest of hard Instagram gainers Instagram normalizes it I, all. right and the same thing goes on the other end if you're somebody who feels like you touch weights well no there's probably a lot of other factors that are in, that are coming into play and the biggest factor is your own mind and fucking with yourself mm-hmm. so you know all, all I all I would give as far as advice with a client like this is trust the process you know throw the scale away for a little while train like you're trying to build train like you're trying to be bulky i dare you to but yeah. eat like you're not don't eat like you're trying to bulk but also don't starve yourself feed the body it needs it needs mm-hmm. nutrients to build muscle because if you're if you're starving yourself calorie wise and you're lifting real heavy too you're still going to slow that metabolism down it'll, yeah. get, it'll get adapted hold to hold on to the fat anyway. right feed it eat but eat good whole nutri- uh, nutrient dense foods and lift heavy and see what the fuck Watch happens. What happens yeah trust the process all right, the next question is from Fit Nina 22 What are your thoughts on carb cycling for fat loss in comparison to intermittent fasting and maintaining consistent daily intake? Is one better than the other in terms of reaching both optimal fat loss and metabolism? Uh, we have to address that the intermittent fasting in there is... This is what I don't like mm-hmm. about it, IF, right? This is what I don't like is... Because it's been sensationalized so much, now it's a diet. Yeah, and it's become a diet yeah. now. Now, and when it becomes a diet, and that, and you're doing it for the intentions of losing body fat, now it's it, now it's more closer to an eating disorder than actually a healthy thing that you should be doing. Mm-hmm. And I know that's kind of hard to, to 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 swallow that when you you if you're listening right now and you love intermittent fasting. But really, intermittent fasting, when it comes to that level where you're using- yeah, it's less of a lifestyle it's, thing. It's called intermittent for a reason. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to intermittently inject it every now and then. Not, It's not supposed to be something that you live by all the time. Our body needs all these nutrients, especially if you're lifting weights and you're exercising. So right out the gates, if you if you look at it like that, because carb cycling and intermittent fasting are totally different. Yeah, I, before, I, before I address comparing them, um, I'll say this. My thoughts on carb cycling- are it's great. Uh, I think all cycling is great. I think you should cycle all your macros. I right. think you should cycle your calories. I think you should cycle the times of day you eat. I think you should cycle cycle protein fasting. Yeah. Yes, because it, think about it, you know what's funny. So I'm glad you said that, Justin, about about protein because nobody ever wants to touch that nope. one, right? If we so far up until now, what we're finding for for health, for optimal health, and to some extent optimal performance, what we're finding is if we feed our bodies in ways that our bodies evolved eating that we will have a good balance between performance and health now for sure a hundred percent no way in hell for most of human civilization somebody didn't eat the same grams of protein every day 100 <laughs> yeah i guarantee you i guarantee you somebody who's 200 pounds isn't like you know uh, for most of human civilization i eat 180 grams of protein every yeah. single day 
That's what I do every day. That's so unnatural, it's ridiculous. There's no way it's we like did that. Killed the same animal like yeah. over and over and over. Yeah, no, there's no way Hit we my did macros. that. Macros. Yeah. Everything was cycled. Everything followed the seasons. Uh, some if and here's a, for most of human civilization, we ate what we could. So what was around us, what grew, and what we killed. That means we cycled fats. That means we cycled carbs. That means we cycled proteins. That means sometimes our calories were high when we had food, and there were long periods of time when we had no food. So we had very low calories. This is why fasting, prolonged fasting, occasional prolonged fasting has been demonstrated for in healthy individuals to have profound health benefits. When I say profound, I mean it's probably one of the single most effective anti-cancer things you could do for yourself to the point where the leading researchers on fasting, um, like Dr. Walter Longo, consider the fasted state and an alternative operating system. In other words, when you fast, you turn on a different operating system where cell autophagy dramatically ramps up. That's the automatic program cell death of cells that are older or mutated or whatever. So it's like this cleaning out process. You activate stem cells. And then when you refeed, those stem cells turn into new, healthier cells We've now we've observed, and this is old science, that when you go on a prolonged fast, like three days, four days, five days long, that the organs will shrink, the liver will shrink. In some cases, the liver can shrink to half its size. Then you re, when you refeed yourself, it comes it back. Grows, yeah. By the way, it doesn't reduce its its function, so you don't you don't have uh, reduced liver function. It literally is like old cells die, boom, replaced with new cells. It's one of the best things you could do occasionally. Now, the daily fasting that people are doing, where they do it every single day and they become dogmatic about it, there, there are some health benefits, but I will also say that doing it all the time, every day, the returns, nonstop- The returns have to diminish. Not just diminish. We're an adaptation machine with everything. It makes total sense to me that the people that, and I know this is going to ruffle some feathers because I know some people love intermittent fasting so much they do it every single day. But I'm sorry, if you're doing it every single day, your body's probably pretty adapted to that. And the major benefits that you were getting when you first started doing that Mm -hmm. have diminished. That doesn't mean you're not getting benefits. mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying you can't do that. All I'm saying is the real things, the real stuff that we're benefiting from is by intermittently injecting it and then stretching it out to these long periods. And not only that, but uh, in the right context of, let's say, HPA axis dysfunction, high cortisol levels, cortisol resistance... Yeah. Consistent fasting makes all that worse. It's not going to benefit you in that situation. It actually makes it worse. Yeah. It makes it worse. It's an added stress. It, it's it becomes an added stress uh, on the body. It becomes a, you know, increases your, your cortisol release and does all these other things. So, so that's on fasting. Now, if we're comparing carb cycling with intermittent fasting to uh, for health and all that stuff, they're both important. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recommend utilizing both of them. The reason why I like fasting. For some of the benefits I talked about, uh, I, I also like fasting for some people for the mental benefits of breaking the chains of food. Now, for some people, it actually can create a worse relationship with food. So if you're somebody that avoids food because you're scared of being fat and you tend to go on that anorexic route, fasting is not what you need to do. But if you're one of these eat every two hours, can we Can we just person, say right now that carb cycling, intermittent fasting, ketogenic diet, vegetarian diet, paleo diet... Uh, zone Veganism. diet, fucking Mediterranean, every fucking diet, everything out there. I think everybody should experience it. I think you not should. Not all the diets. Some of them are crazy. Well, no, all, all the ones I named right now, <laughs> not right? The cookie diet. Yeah, you don't yeah. need to do the cookie diet. But you know what? Maybe, maybe try that for a little bit and see how you fucking feel and connect the dots. Yeah. That's <laughs> the point. Is that whatever you do, it's not. Don't do not attach yourself to a single way of eating as better than something else. Learn to go through these diets. Learn to go through these these structured ways of eating, and learn to connect the dots well, to what it does for your body and how it makes you feel. Absolutely, I think it's. Along those lines, you have to find what's homeostasis for you. So whatever you have responded to the best, remember that, you know, remember that and and come back to it after you like, you know, go through another process and you're challenging yourself, just like optimizing the body. And we we talk about this, you know, somewhat where, you know, I want to find what's working best, but now I want to stretch my my abilities and my capacity a little bit more. Right. Well, you know, and I always go back to the example of when we went through the whole ketogenic process, but that's exactly what it is. We did that. 
there and it's not that the ketogenic diet was is so great or it's so bad because that's what you right now what do we see right now like I saw our boy Lane the other day posted talking shit about the high fats and sure. everybody again everybody wants to be in a camp either you're pro keto or you're mm-hmm. not you know, no it's not that it's how about you go through it and pay attention to how your body feels and oh shit maybe you were probably grossly under eating fat for a long time and now you feel fucking great it doesn't mean that the ketogenic diet is the diet for you it means that your body was lacking fucking fat and now you gave it or you were oversaturating it with too much fucking carbohydrate processed foods and carbohydrates and now that you reduce it it's not the fucking diet it's the macro profile that you changed currently and let it help or use those tools to help connect you well, use, what are they to getting closer to what your body needs what's the quote let food be thy medicine right so like i right? i know when to change my macro uh, profile. I know when to change my food intake based on, at this point now, based how on feel. how I feel, my inflammation, performance, all these different things. Carb cycling, the reason why people like carb cycling so much I is like it carb increases, increases sensitivity to carbohydrates. So your body responds better to them. It gives you periods of maybe more fat intake when your carbohydrates uh, lower. People do notice increased fat loss with it, uh, probably for the reasons that I just yeah, highlighted. Yeah, the leptin and ghrelin benefits like that. So all those things. I, yeah, if no. you're too consistent all the time, not a good idea with nutrition. Mm. Uh, I think you should cycle in and out of all those different things, identify what they do for you, know that your body will change and circumstances will change, and along with those, your diet should change. Next question is from Jazzasaur. Thoughts mm-hmm. now that the FCC has voted to kill net neutrality. Oh yeah, I can't believe it. Here's the question I wanted to get to. You wanted to get here. You wanted to go here. Huh? I did want to go here because one, there's a lot of confusion around this, yeah. and um, I've read and and watched a lot of fucking videos and shit on both sides of this. So and and I and I can I could argue it either way, but I know what I'm pro. I mean, any yeah. any time fucking government regulation gets involved in anything, I I can't re- I can't think of something off the top of my head that it's been good. No, and yeah. it, it, here's the th- so this is by the way for and this is a lot of a lot of people don't realize. Yeah, explain this first before we yeah. go into talking. So shit about the it. FCC regulates uh, like phone lines and stuff like that, and so the regulation of net neutrality was under that kind of under that guy. So they're using these these outdated regulations mm-hmm. and trying to figure out a way to apply them to the internet. Um, the principle of net neutrality is that all internet service providers must treat all data on the internet the same and not discriminate or charge differently by user, content, website, platform, application. Like they're not allowed to- Which that kills free market right what, there. Okay. Does so, not allow a, a company, one other company to go in and say- I'm going to do this better. That's We're going right. to spend more money. Mm-hmm. We're going to build more towers. We're going to make it more efficient. We're going to give away more. So fuck you. I want to charge yeah, more. No, that, no. It, it, so this is the, it's. Here's the thing. People are like, no. This ensures fairness. We need uh, rules to make everything <laughs> fair. <laughs> That's never. Let, let me yeah, tell you something. Let me, works. let me explain something to you. We're not this is equal. not the first time this has happened. This has happened in all growing, powerful industries that we've seen since the industrial revolution. We will have an industry come out, explode, grow quickly, and then they will come out. And usually it's promoted by the new industry leaders. So if you have like taxi cab companies, taxi cab companies lobby to pass laws that say in order to become a taxi cab driver, you have to pay for this, what they call a medallion in some places, to be able to drive a taxi. Now, the way they sell it is we want to ensure that everything is safe, regulated, yeah. that we're regulated. We want to make sure only the right people are driving taxis. And Uber's a perfect example yeah. why it works and, better to do it that and, way. In reality, what they're, <laughs> what they're doing is they're just protecting themselves. Yeah. So uh, the, the biggest supporters of net neutrality are the big players in the market, Netflix and Google and these big companies. Of course they want net neutrality. It protects them from potential innovation mm-hmm. and competition. Right. This is all industries work this way. It's the alliance of government and big business. Now, some people argue and say, well, we need this because there's only in some places, there's only like one or two ISP providers. We already have a monopoly. That is not because of the free market. I'm sorry. It's not, it isn't because business decided we can only have one ISP. It's your local government. It's your local government allowing so many phone lines, allowing so many companies to provide this data. And that's why there's no competition. It's not the market. Now, net neutrality says we need to keep everything fair, make everything be treated the same. Let's apply that philosophy 
to other things in the market. Let's imagine we said, um, I don't know, all all shipping needs to count the same, uh, cost the same. We want to make sure all companies ship things to you and they have to be charged the same exact amount. Would we have Amazon Prime? Would we have UPS or FedEx that came out and forced uh, our mail system to compete? Do you know how long it took? By the way, <laughs> you know overnight well, shipping- it all look like the post office. Bro, overnight shipping, our post office said was impossible for decades. They said yeah. it'll never happen. Then UPS comes out, FedEx come out, revolutionize the industry, create ways of shipping things to your house overnight. And you got to pay for it. You got to pay more for it. Of course you do. If you don't have to pay for it, who's going to invest the time and money right, to, to innovate if there's not more money? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, okay, that's where innovation comes from. It comes from they see a, they see a market need, they see people will pay for it, they come in and innovate. Now all of a sudden the post office can can deliver overnight. Amazon Prime is an example of that. Anytime you have government step in and say Every, this is this is fair. We need to create fairness. You know what? I tell you what. Uh, milk and eggs, staple in nutrition, staple for 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 people. Those are staple foods. We need to make sure everybody gets milk and eggs. We need to create fairness. By the way, I'm going to sell this like a politician. Okay, you ready? We need to make sure milk and eggs. Everybody get milk and eggs. They are nutritious. Uh, people need them. Uh, they are staples in our diet. I want to make sure that everybody has access to milk and eggs. Therefore. No gallon of milk can be sold for more than 75 cents, and no dozen eggs can be sold more than more than 75 cents. We want to ensure fairness. Bottom line. Sounds nice. Sounds great, right? If you're the average person, you're listening to that going, wow, they're going to pass a law and miraculously make milk and eggs cheaper, and everything's going to stay the same. We're going to yeah, have all this access. What, there's always a cause all and effect. It, right. What is the effect what, of that now? What we have done now is I've sent a artificial signal to the market saying that there is no more value in producing more milk. There is no more value in producing more eggs or better quality eggs. We're going to achieve shortages. As a result, less producers are going to go into the market to create these products because there's no money involved. And now, milk only costs 75 cents if you could fucking find it. Good luck. Or wait in line for three hours to try and get it. Yeah. This is how. Uh, this is the mentality around socialism. This is the mentality around a lot of these things. So the when the FCC comes out and says, we're going to make it an even playing field, what they're doing is they're killing innovation. Mm-hmm. Now, the fear is that Netflix or companies like Netflix, like Google, whatever, are going to say to you, hey, if you want our super pre- premier service, you got to pay more. Or we're going to charge you now $500 a month because now we're getting charged more because we're sending so much data because now the ISP providers can charge us more. Us more. Fucking do it. I right. dare you, Netflix. Yeah, yeah. we'll do see that how the shit. market responds. What do you think's going to happen? Yeah. Right. Now, let's say they do do that in a, for a second. Let's say for a second, it does cost more for these things. That opens up the market for, for somebody, competition. Yeah, right, for somebody else to come in and make it better. And don't think for a second that the only way you get your internet is through the ISP providers. Because I guarantee you, at some point, and it's already starting to happen, we have innovators figuring out different ways to deliver data to you. Mm-hmm. Facebook. Facebook is investing money in fucking blimps that fly over areas that don't yeah. have access yeah. to give people free internet. Why? Why would Facebook... I'm still waiting on Google Wire. Why would Facebook want to give people free internet? Why would they pay to deliver free internet? Think about that. Because it benefits them. Right. It benefits them to provide these services. So, And the reason why the internet, of all the things we can think of in modern times, nothing has grown faster or innovated faster, or has produced more wealth in a short period of time, like the internet. It's been incredible. Nothing compares. Right. If we looked at internet web pages just 10 years ago compared to now, they're almost unrecognizable. Look at the products that we use in tech. Look at the price of tech. Do you know in 1978, I think, when the Walkman first came out, in 1978 dollars, I'm not even adjusting it for inflation, was over $300 to buy a Walkman. Back then, it was over three hundred dollars. If we adjust it for inflation, something like uh, uh, for inflation, something like five hundred something dollars, right? You know, and today you could get a Walkman. I guarantee you could get a cassette player for a dollar. Yeah, <laughs> but you get it for free. Yeah, nobody yeah. wants that they'll, shit. They'll, they'll give it away. That's because technology and the internet have largely been unregulated because it's growing Well, let's go back to your analogy. Imagine if they did that in that industry right there and they put they made it fair, like you had to keep it at a certain point. We'd still be listening to Walkmans. Right. Yeah. Imagine, if, <laughs> yeah. imagine if, I don't know, imagine if 50 years ago, 
Like rewinding it with a pencil. Here, yeah. imagine if 50 years ago the government came out and said, hey, clothes and shoes essential. Everybody needs clothes and shoes. So we are going to regulate the fuck out of it and make, we are going to give everybody, we're going to provide shoes and clothes for everybody. You're not going to buy them from these greedy capitalists who are trying to make money off you. The government's going to provide you with clothes and shoes. Do you know what your clothes and shoes would look like? Do you know how shitty they would be? Has, and is anybody familiar with the car the Soviet Union made? I forgot the name of it, by the way. There was an actual car made by the Soviet Union Biggest piece of shit of all time, and you had to wait something like five or ten years to apply just to get it. <laughs> Meanwhile, in America, we had a more free market, not totally free, but more free market with automobiles, and we innovate and created these safe, economic, amazing vehicles in the same period of time it took the Soviet Union to create this piece of shit that they deliver after you apply for it for ten, in ten years. Ridiculous. with The Trabant. There it is. Uh, yeah, piece of crap. I was going to say, it wasn't the Yugo, because that was Yugoslavia. Yeah. Yeah, right? So, uh, no, you don't want... You don't want... And listen... Here's the other thing. The government has been trying now for 10 years at least to figure out a way to get their hands on the internet because it scares the well, fuck you out of them. You didn't even talk about what, what mm-hmm. I think the scariest part about this is they can also censor the information that's being provided on these things. So, you know, if all of a sudden, you know, uh, Netflix becomes a huge supporter of Donald Trump, then they they only provide stuff that supports him and then there's anti Hillary or someone else or you can flip that on its head if Netflix all of a sudden gets into bed with Hillary then they can actually filter the information that you can get get through their services so there's a, com- a complete bias that way too you don't want that mm-hmm. well look at what's already happening with YouTube and how like they're trying to filter all of like the swearing and they're they're trying to filter like all the different messages people are putting out so it's like you know, like who's to say now somebody could come in and we could do it on a different platform versus now we're stuck. Like, mm-hmm. like they just killed business for a lot of people. So, so telecommunications, your phones were, when phones were first created and invented, the, you know, it was kind of unregulated. And then the government stepped in to protect, right? Oh, we're <laughs> going to protect the people. My fucking <laughs> ass. How many places do you live where we're you have- provide earmuffs. Look at, you know how long it, you know how long it was where the only phone provider you had in an area was AT&T? Like if you didn't go to AT&T, you had no phone. There was no other. I couldn't shop a bunch of different, and that's because of regulations. We were limited to like one service provider in a different, different areas. 2014, it was, I think it was Obama who urged the FCC to reclassify broadband internet as telecommunications. That's smart. What they were trying to do is trying to classify internet as telephone because now they have all the controls already in place. Uh, They're trying, and that was just part of the whole plan of getting their hands in the internet. And for in every single case, when the government gets their hands on something, they sell it with good intentions. Uh, it's 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 for the uninformed or for the average person. It sounds like a good thing, and those regulations only grow, only grow. They get their hands on it more and more, and nothing scares the government more than the internet. The internet is anarchy. It yeah. literally is anarchy. You can go on the internet, you can search almost anything, you can read almost anything. People can share things, it can be shared I love instantly. That. It is anarchy and they've been trying. There's There's been several bills that have gone through Congress where they've tried to, for our safety, right? And they always name it something like the Patriot Act, for example. It doesn't have anything to do with fucking patriots. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the net neutrality has nothing to do with Net neutrality. It's all about, <laughs> right. you know, uh, getting their hands they on- They try and position like it's, oh, we're trying to help yeah. you. If you vote are. against us, you're not no. a patriot. And by sir. the way, <laughs> the net neutrality laws passed two years ago. So how was the internet before two years ago? Well, it was fine. It's going to continue to be fine. Companies are definitely going to try doing different things. I guarantee you're going to get these piecemeal companies who say, okay, fine. If you pay only this much, we'll give you just these websites or just this- let them try it. They'll probably fail because people want everything. Or maybe they won't. Maybe some people will like paying less for that type of stuff. Maybe there'll be services with way better you know, stuff or whatever. Let the competition continue and watch what happens. All no, right. I, I, sorry. Uh, FCC did the right thing, I think. Next question is from Protein Power Ranger. <laughs> Do you think that when we were children, we knew how to eat intuitively, but life and dietary pressures from others messes us up? That's an interesting question. Um... I don't, you know, fuck. You know why that's interesting is because animals have an animal instinct, right? So if you took like a dog and you had, and they, and they actually do this, right? There's some people that actually go to this extent. I know there's companies that do this where hmm. you can plant trees and, and different plants and stuff that are inside uh, your backyard that if the dog's having stomach problems or the dog's lacking super, certain nutrients, 
it'll naturally go to the things that it needs. And Don't dogs eat grass yeah, sometimes? They eat grass right. They'll, they'll eat, when their yeah. stomach's upset, they eat grass throw to make themselves throw up, right? And it's not you don't train your dog to do that. It just knows to do that. Hmm. So there, I could see the argument of, but the problem with this is that babies are the only, and you just talked about this the other day, Sal, is like babies come out, we're the only like species that requires the assistance from our, one of the only ones right right yeah. that that require like without fetus we would yeah. die with if we if we just if someone just like had a baby then left us out in the middle of the desert we would die like you <laughs> just can't do shit yeah we wouldn't be able to do shit where if you did that with an animal there's a 50 50 chance that animal would survive right that bet that whatever baby animal it is it's interesting because it if you put shitty food out there that's like it'll it'll hook them in like so it's some kind of like sugary cereal or um cake or whatever like to a kid they're going to consume the fuck out of it mm -hmm. and and then they're going to want that more and more and more and more where you know i'm sure at some point it'll be you know it, they'll feel the ramifications of that and their body will get sick and um you know maybe that'll lead to better decisions but yeah that's an interesting thought because i don't i i think that it's <sighs> I think instinct the, isn't they haven't learned I, right, I, the actual like you know the process of what feels good if if you know it's the exposure in, in but itself. But I definitely that think to, that we can we can train that pal. We could train that in our kids early on. Like I think it's crazy. Like okay, so right out the gates, I think probably I don't know what the percentage of people that use like Gerber foods. You're already like now we're already giving them something processed and unnatural. Where if you, I know some people take the extra step to grinding. Yeah, people up. don't don't want to hear that. Right? You know? No, no, nobody wants to hear that because it's easy, it's convenient for all of us. But you're already starting to fuck them up on the, in the mm -hmm. wrong direction as far as changing their palate for processed foods and stuff like that. And the ideal way would be to probably grind up some real fruits and vegetables. And, and I know some, I know some parents that have done that. Right? Yeah. The kid doesn't know any different at that mm -hmm. age. You know what I'm saying? And, but they do once you give them that fucking ice cream or you give them that candy. And you see the response the thing, in their man. face right away, and their eyes light up, and they get all it's a trigger. Yeah, it's right. crazy. So I think so. I think we underestimate our, our our natural instincts. I think we're all born with a strong level of intuitive uh, eating. I think when you take an infant and you place them on the mother's bosom, it seeks out the nipple and it drinks uh, the milk. Nobody teaches it to do that. It's instinctual. I think babies are instinctually attracted to sweet. Because sweet means uh, not poison, usually mm. means safe. Babies and children are automatically repelled by bitter because in nature, bitter means potentially poison or whatever. I think, uh, and this this is, you know, most anthropologists will say this, that uh, although we didn't have baby food, what we probably did is we probably chewed up the food and spit it back in our, our baby's mouth. One of the reasons why a lot of times you'll get that urge to like bite down and grab and grit your teeth when you see a cute baby, like you want to bite that, oh, I don't want to bite that baby. Some anthropologists think that's instinctual because it, it's we used to chew our food and then give it to the baby. So we have this instinctual mm. need to want to grit and oh, squeeze really? our teeth. Weird. Yeah. Um, now the problem is that the environment is not the same, the the same environment that we evolved in to right. trust our intuition. So a baby or a child who grew up in a natural environment will put things in their mouth. Of course, that's what kids do. Part of it's building up the gut floor and all that stuff. But they'll probably want to eat and chew and swallow the sweet thing that they found because, again, it means safe and whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was probably a piece of fruit or some piece of vegetable that was safe to eat or whatever or breast milk. In the current environment, that means most processed foods that didn't exist before. So that intuition is still there. Mm -hmm. It's just in a completely doesn't serve you as well. As it's it in a different to. environment. Yeah, you know, it's just in a different. Well, it's environment. mixed signals because right. it's artificial. Like we've manufactured. Well, I don't know if it's mixed food items. or it's it's heightened. Right, is what it is. It's just like we talked about this the other day. Like. You know, I have a hard. I like Diet Cokes, and I know why my body's addicted to it. It's because of how sweet the artificial sweetener is. I don't even like regular sugar. Regular mm -hmm. sugar is yeah. not strong enough, right? It doesn't give me that same sweet taste because I've acquired that. Right now, somebody else is going, "Oh God, I hate that taste." Well, that's because you haven't you you haven't become addicted to it. Well, we do the same thing with the kids. Like that sweet, like Sal saying, is right. It's safe. It, it's same similar signals like the milk signal, only it's amplified by a thousand times mm -hmm. and you're already starting to get them adapted to that yeah. that signal so now yeah of course it's and not, the palate the palate actually they're showing lots of uh, uh lots of evidence now that shows that the infant's palate starts developing in the womb right from the mom which makes sense it makes sense because it makes sense that a child or that a baby would be born enjoying the food that their mother ate because it's likely that that's what they'll be eating 
when they're born. It's likely that that's what they're going to be exposed to. So it starts in the womb. What you eat, your child will probably enjoy and crave, or is more likely to enjoy and crave. Mm. Then what you feed the baby, the palate starts to develop. So we've talked about this before, how like uh, uh, Asian families, you know, who ch- Chinese children who grew up in China, they're not repelled or repulsed by the smell of fish. Like fish doesn't repel them. When you go to a market and it's a fishy smell, they grew up around it, their palate developed around it, doesn't repel them. Now, you take the average American who doesn't eat a lot of fish, you put them in a fish market and like, oh, it smells like fish. I don't like that. It kind of repels them. And vice versa, there's foods that the Chinese child might find repulsive in, in America. Um, I can't, uh, I mean, if you show a can, if you open a can of Chef Boyardee and you show it to <laughs> Italian, Italian kids who eat like traditional food, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll want to throw up. It's so bad because they're not used to right. pasta being that way or whatever. Um, whereas you know American kids might think the irony in all delicious. this when you get when you get into the, like the whole mom and womb thing, which I think is a sensitive sensitive subject because it's oh they if, feel like they're being judged. Well, yeah, we it's <laughs> yeah. which I think is funny to me because if we saw a pregnant a nine month pregnant pregnant woman uh, shooting heroin, doing co- cocaine, or drinking alcohol. We would freak out. Yeah, right? a little Every, bit of judgment there. Right, a lot of judgment. Freak out. Oh my God, she's a horrible mother. But no, but no one would say anything to the mother who's slamming a Big Mac from McDonald's every single night and pounding all, opening these wrappers and eating candy and shoveling her face full of all these processed foods. But they're all. It's all getting in the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. It's all getting in the bloodstream, and it's all getting over to the baby it's somehow. Passed on, right? And it's getting and it's getting passed on. And you potentially could be setting your your kid up for all these all already craving these bad foods or a different palate right out the gate. It's tough because I feel I really really feel for mothers for a few different reasons. One, it's challenging enough. I can't even begin to imagine what it must feel like to uh, lose partial control of your body you have this thing grow inside of you that you care about and it's like mm-hmm. i mean for all intents and purposes like this little parasite growing inside of you that is kind of controlling you your right. hormones are changing uh your emotions are changing your body's changing you can't help it you got cravings you're hungry like Cra- crazy yeah you may feel terrible about yourself because of the way you know you look or because of the way you feel and you're tired and all these different things Which that, but, and then you want to go eat something but think about that that's been that's been happening for thousands of years totally yeah totally and, but, but i feel what's different now and it's only been different for the last 50 to 100 years we're in abundance is yes we have an abundance of shit like <laughs> yeah. a, a woman a thousand years ago had that the same hormonal shit same all those things happening on but she if she wanted a bunch of extra calories like oh, it's it, super easy you just have to be selective now like right. you really have to just like understand different challenge what's the yeah. best it's a different right. challenge right yeah. completely different challenge and, and that's a different challenge with children i don't think back you know i don't think for most of human civilization we were totally strict with what our kids ate besides don't eat that poison food don't eat that thing that's going to kill you other than that it was more like you better eat because there ain't going to be food. Yeah. You know, eat coming all up of it. Yeah. yeah. So now we have to manage it. Now we have to manage what our children eat because we're developing their palate, we're developing their brain and their bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, a big part of that is controlling what we eat when we're pregnant and what we eat in front of them and what we eat as a family together and all that different stuff. It's just a new challenge. It's a new modern challenge that we have to face. But it's an important one, and yeah. it's definitely one that it's better to start early uh, than later. Right? I'll tell you what, man. It's uh, you are shaping how your children will want to eat in the future by the way you feed them as children. That doesn't mean you turn it into a negative thing either. I don't mean right, you right. sit there and, and create this, you know, crazy environment where you tell your kid they're gonna be fat all the time because you're no, just gonna no, do the no, opposite. No, no. But it just it's 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 awareness. It's just being yeah. aware of it. It's yeah. like be yeah. aware that and and I'm not shaming any pregnant woman that goes out and has an apple pie. Like that's not my point of saying that and I'm sure somebody got offended that way. But the point is just be a fucking aware of that. Like you yeah. are that is getting in you're digesting that, that's getting into your blood and then that's getting served right up to your kids. So think about that. Yeah. And if you want the best for them, it's if you know conscience if you it. know that you already struggle like myself from the way, the patterns and the things that my my parents allowed me to eat and do as a kid. And now I struggle with it my entire life as an adult. If you don't want those same things for your kids, then think about that when you're when you're consuming food that you know that you're sharing with mm-hmm. them. Absolutely. Uh, check this out. Go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. We post new videos all the time. In fact, we've had a few controversial ones up there recently. Get in the comments and debate some of these trolls on YouTube. Defend Mind Pump. Yeah. Come to our aid.
We want the soldiers out there. We love you. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.